I'm getting that 600 in. Well, out in the garden. So, Asus has sent out this just shy of 700 pound gaming router. They reached out to sponsor this video with one request. My honest thoughts. Now, the question is, is it any good? Well, today we're gonna find out. And every router starts at the unboxing experience. Now, if you've watched any of my networking videos in the past, you'll know I'm not a massive fan of combi devices like this. What's a combi device? Well, it's a device that's got everything built into it all in one. So a network switch and an access point. But this one, although it's got a 10 gig switch built into it, Wi-Fi 6 and 7, I think it's big enough to warrant the space to do everything really well. Now, whilst we're on the topic of design as well, again, not usually a massive fan of external antennas. When you can pick up an access point nowadays, which looks a little something like this, you don't see any external antennas on this. However, with this being Wi-Fi 7, I'm gonna reserve my comments because there's that many Wi-Fi bands built into this router, I'm sure there's a rhyme or a reason to have eight antennas this big sticking out the side of the device. And now the juiciest stuff around the back. I've got the power brick plugged in here. We've got a USB 2 and 3 port for external storage and connecting USB devices. And then here, this is where this gets really interesting. We've got a quad LAN setup here, but that is actually a 10G Ethernet port, 10 gigabits per second, and it can be used as WAN or LAN. And then on this side, we've got two more LAN ports. One of them is a standard one gig port, and then this one is apparently the gaming port, again, at 10G. So as far as future-proofing is concerned, and 10G coming into people's homes, yeah, this should have you covered. Now, I know setting up a device like this can be quite a daunting task for those of you who aren't educated in networks, but Asus have made this quite simple. You either put the IP address of the router into your web browser or you just go to asusrouter.com whilst you're connected to this and then it brings up this splash page. I'm gonna go advanced settings here and here we get to choose an operation mode. Now, this is really cool. This isn't just your standalone router. You can configure it in numerous different ways. If you just wanna take advantage of the incredible wide Wi-Fi performance this has and you've already got a router, you're going to use AP mode. And it can also be used as a media bridge or an AI mess, which is actually Asus's mesh technology. So you can buy basically numerous Asus networking products and actually mesh them together to create one larger seamless network around your house. For this though, I'm going to set it up in the default mode, wireless router mode. And here we get to choose our connection type. So I've actually got this router connected into a two and a half gig switch at the moment so I'm going to choose the 2.5G LAN1 and I'm going to choose automatic IP for my DHCP. And now we get to go ahead and create our wireless networks that this device is going to give off. Now as you can see we have 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz 1, 5 gigahertz 2 and 6 gigahertz. So I would recommend having a separate name for all of these networks so you can make sure as the end user you know what you're connecting to. And then, love it, upgrade to the latest version. Very good, Asus. And with that out of the way, the firmware update is complete. My first Wi-Fi 7 router has been set up. I have an iPhone 15 Pro Max here, which isn't capable of Wi-Fi 7, but does boast some pretty impressive Wi-Fi 6E speeds up on that six gigahertz spectrum. So let's connect and do some speed tests. And then I've also bought in an older Wi-Fi 5 router. This is a Ubiquiti Amplify, and we'll do some tests side by side with this thing. So I pay for 700 megabits per second into this house. That is my internet speed. So if we can get all of that over Wi-Fi, I'm going to be happy. Test bit rate. Go up. <laughs> That's just absolutely mental. 860, 70, 80. That's almost 900 meg. I'm getting more than what I pay for. So now into the conservatory, which leads on from the main studio. Let's test my bitrate. I'm still connected to the Wi-Fi 6E and it's just absolutely bonkers. 800 in the room next to where the router is. That is 
insane. Okay, so outside in the garden, I do want to make this quick because it's two degrees here in the UK. I'm still connected to the six gigahertz network coming off the device in the studio behind me. And as you can see, I'm getting that 600 in. Well, out in the garden. That is insane. <laughs> I've still got full signal as well. Three bars on my iPhone and I'm stood in the garden. Yeah, that is, that is impressive. And I feel like it's a combination of those external antennas, which I'm not so fond of. I am here though. And that Wi-Fi 6E in the six gigahertz spectrum. <coughs> Whilst we were stood in the same room, you can see that the speeds on the BE98 were almost double that that the Wi-Fi 5 gave us, 463 versus 887. Moving further away into the conservatory, the Wi-Fi 5 pushed us a staggering 305 megabits per second, whereas the BE98 managed to maintain the entirety of my internet connection coming into the house. 871. And then moving outside for test number three on the Wi-Fi 5, we only managed 82 megabits per second, whereas on the Wi-Fi 6E, we got 694. So all that's to say the new generation of Wi-Fi, whether it's at six gigahertz you're talking about or Wi-Fi 7, it's definitely a leap in performance versus the older legacy stuff. To ride this home further, I also did some tests with a Wi-Fi 6 AP from Alter Labs and you can see all of these results on screen now. This is the result close to the router. This is the result in the conservatory. And then as you go outside, you can see that the Wi-Fi 6E or at the six gigahertz spectrum, we are pushing some mad speeds versus the older standard. So the question, is it better? The answer is yes. So when you go to asusrouter.com and the router's all set up, this is what you get displayed with. A live graph of what's going on on the network. You also get your average ping in response time, which is absolutely awesome. So you can quickly look at this and decipher where the lag is coming from on your network. If we were to have any problems whilst gaming, we could come on here and say, okay, it's not a problem with the internet connection because our average ping is 21 milliseconds. It's gonna be something inside this house that's affecting us. So all these tools are gonna help you pinpoint where problem areas may occur. And let's say it was one specific device on your network hogging up all the bandwidth and making your games lag. Well, you'd be able to come on here and see where that network traffic is coming from and how much is being used in real time. Really neat. Now there is a physical button on the actual device labeled LED, but in here you can actually go ahead and choose what that physical button on top of the router does. I've got it to turn on and off the LED logo on the top. Now this AI mesh is something that Asus have had in all of their products for some time, and this is one of my favorite features that Asus has at their disposal. The reason I really like this AI mesh feature is because let's say you upgrade to this new device, but you've got an older Asus router kicking about, and you may think it's now obsolete because you've got a new one. Well, if your older router supports the AI mesh, which a lot of them do, you can go ahead and use your old router in AI mesh with this new device. Therefore, it can act as a wireless access point to expand your Wi-Fi coverage, which I think is awesome and there isn't many other manufacturers doing this. Anything to stop working tech products ending up in landfill for me is massive. So well done, Asus. If you wanted to add one of these nodes, you can simply go ahead and add a node here. You can also do system settings where you can turn on the Ethernet backhaul. So if you had another router, you could AI mesh it to this one so they talk to each other wirelessly, or you could wire them together with an Ethernet connection, which is obviously going to be far superior than using Wi-Fi backhaul. Now, I'm always going to be clear with you guys. Gaming features on routers are usually a little bit of a fad. However, Asus have gone about it in a bit of a different way here. Level one here is you've got that gaming port prioritization. Now, that is a physical port, a 10 gig port on the back of the router. What Asus is saying is any device that's plugged into this port will go ahead and get priority over the rest of the network. Network. So this is where your gaming computer wants to go. Now, level two, game packet prioritization. Let's go over to the game boost section. Now you see here, it's asking us to enable QoS. Let's go ahead and do that. Now QoS is nothing new. It stands for quality of service. A lot of people will aim this at gamers because what it's gonna go ahead and do is actually 
limit the entire network's bandwidth to make sure not one device on the network is going to hog everything. So let's say we've got two devices on the network, one person that's gaming and one person that's downloading something. If the one person downloads something and saturates the network, the gamer will start to lag. However, adaptive QoS here will make sure the person that is streaming isn't able to suck up the entire network bandwidth, leaving just a little bit of bandwidth for the gamer to make sure that they don't lag. But this takes it a little bit of a step further because you can go in and actually specify what type of web application you want to have prioritized. Now, I mentioned that hardware port on the back, which has got priority over all of the other ports. There's a software version of it too. So you can go ahead and add a game device. So if I click here, I can go ahead and add, let's say my MacBook Pro, obviously I'm not gaming on this device. But if I add this as a priority device, that now means that this device, my MacBook Pro, gets priority over everything else. And last but not least, they give you an internet speed test, which is built directly into the router, powered by none other than speedtest.net themselves. So you can go ahead here and run a speed test directly from the internet to the router to make sure there's no bottlenecks. And like I said before, troubleshoot your network. So as you can see, I'm getting just shy of 900 to the router, which is really interesting to see that we were basically getting that over the Wi-Fi 6E as well. Now this game radar is kind of cool, although it is a slight bit of a gimmick. You can choose certain game servers here and then it will go ahead and send pings off to those game servers so you can literally see what your ping times are like to these specific game servers. So you can see here that I'm getting a significantly better ping, almost 10 milliseconds in fact, to this server bar all of the others which are in the 30s. And then other than that, it's basically just your standard router settings. You can go to the wireless here, go ahead and change all of your wireless names and passwords. And as you can see, we've got them all separated, which I love to see. You can go ahead and set up a segregated network for things like guests or IoT devices. So if you click on the guest network pro here, it gives you all of these options. You can actually create a guest portal, which is basically, if you ever logged onto one of those Wi-Fi places in like a coffee shop and it brings up a splash page, you can do that in this device, which is really awesome. And if you are using this device for gaming, something I would recommend doing is going to the open NAT here and turning on port forwarding. This will make sure that any of your games that are trying to open ports to get out to the servers, they will be able to do that. You can also open NAT and port forward with a load of built-in games, which you can see down here. They've got a massive stack of games. So what are my final thoughts of this device? Now, obviously this thing isn't cheap. I'll put all the links for you guys down there in the description. This thing is really, really powerful. It's got the latest specs in it as far as Wi-Fi is concerned, that being Wi-Fi 6E in the six gigahertz spectrum and the latest standard Wi-Fi 7. As well as that, Ethernet, it's also really future-proof. You've got 10 gig in on the one side, as well as numerous two and a half gig LAN ports and some 10 gig LAN ports as well, if you have a device with a 10 gig LAN port on it. In other words, if you purchase this, you shouldn't need to upgrade for a very, very long time. Building upon that as well, I really like Asus's AI mesh feature. I was actually expecting not to like the design of this thing because personally, I prefer networking products that are designed slightly more sleekly. However, I 100% appreciate that this device has been made by ROG. I think what I'm trying to say is Asus really get away with it here because the whole thing runs with their Republic of Gamers theme. I've unboxed so many Asus products over the years and even this product, the unboxing experience was stellar. And this device is packed full of features to keep your network up and running for years to come. Guys, I'm gonna be doing loads more networking videos throughout this year. So if you're into that sort of thing, please get subscribed. But for now, my name's been Alex. This has been TechFlow and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.